Hi guys, um, this is today's forage. is pokeweed. I didn't get to get out there and show it to you guys, but you, most of you in the South know what this looks like. I'm about to boil it twice. I only boil twice. Uh, I like mine a little bit crunchy when I saute it, but check that out. It's huge. It covers almost my three burners that I have in my RV, and I love it. I just absolutely love it. It's something that you don't really have to wash um, as long. It's not it's like the perfect size and it's a clean cut so if you did today we we had gotten some hay from the goat barn to cover a garden while I was picking this so I did have to wash it a couple of times and I usually like to watch wash them individually and that goes for even the smaller leaf items but our, our weeds we I, I just say weeds because everybody calls them weeds but it's food to me and all right, so I am boiling this. I'm gonna change it out twice, like I said earlier. And this is the first time. But it's got, uh, there's not much studies, or many studies about pokeweed, but I, I mean, I guess anything with anything that you see in wild edibles, you have to just make sure you're 100% accurate and understand the plant this has to be changed out because it is it's got toxins in it i'm used to this kind of food i have to boil bamboo because it has cyanide in it once it turns gold um bamboo that is once it turns golden the sign any type of heat dissipates the, the the cyanide out of bamboo but that's for another video anyway back to the pokeweed i change it out twice some people are really scared to eat it but it has such a great taste. If you like asparagus, you're probably gonna love this. Um, it doesn't have the same smell, but the, the crunch that the stems have, the taste is very similar. And I, I like to saute it with butter, garlic, and salt. It's just that simple, and you can put some pepper on it. Or whatever you want your seasonings to be on your sauteed vegetables, just lightly saute it, because you've already boiled it twice, so. Um, some people go all out and boil it five or six ten times i don't do that i don't like my my vegetables mushy and i don't get side effects from this for myself and i've been eating it since i was a kid but anyway um it does have some benefits to it i'm not an herbalist i'm not a medical professional but some of the things that they're looking at for future study and creating medicines with this um what you call weed it are anti-cancer anti-hiv um meaning that it boosts your immune system against hiv to where it fights against the cell or strengthens the cells that hiv normally weakens so and they even had on one thing that i read um like against cancers like melanoma i mean you just a lot of these natural what people call weeds and they kill them in their yard they use herbicides poison their soil and to get rid of this stuff but don't have to it's such a great it's just such a great plant but anyway um just be careful and again my disclaimer i've already said it i'm not a pro uh, professional my knowledge is just from generational knowledge and my own self-taught research okay so I'm gonna show you guys what happens after you boil it twice. Okay, now after two washes, I have my pokeweed, which is about to be poke salad, what we call poke salad here. And then we, are, I have it in olive oil. I decided to do olive oil, not butter, because I like cold leftovers um, for as far as vegetables and sometimes meat. But I don't like the fattiness of the, sorry about the sideways camera. But anyway, I don't like the fattiness, so I have some pink salt that I'm just going to spread over. And I do love salt, so it helps preserve the food too. And then I'm going to put some black pepper. I'm having to do this one-handed so that my camera at work is not really that great. So I'm going to put some black pepper. And yes, I like black pepper. I don't have garlic um, right now, but I... I'm craving it. I wish I did have it. So now all I'm going to do is let it. Sorry about my hands. Probably cut that out. Anyway, then saute it. 
Now, if you're on um, medication, because a lot of these natural foods, what people call weeds, have a lot of benefits to them, um, you need to make sure you have a practitioner that you're working with that prescribed you the medication to go over, well, if they know the side effects, usually the pharmacist knows that. But go over it with you and um, make sure it's not going to interact with your medication. For instance, if you have high blood pressure, you drink ginger tea, um, and you, if you're on blood pressure medication, you are going to experience allergy, and you're going to experience being tired all the time. So it depends on how much ginger tea you drink, or even onions. So you, you need to always... If you're on medication, you need to be aware of what you're putting in your body. The good thing is about a good diet, if you know how to forage your food, a lot of times your body will maintain health because that's the way God created everything around us to keep us healthy. Um, like the edibles and every single edible that I know of has some kind of medicinal value and health value to it. So. You just need to be aware of these things and, and not just think you can just go out there and eat everything. If you're on medication, you need to find out what the interaction of these foods are going to do. A lot of things in the supermarket are GMOs. They're modified. They don't. They have so much less of the nutritional value and benefits than wild edibles do or um, the seeds that you get that are heirloom seeds is what you want um, to grow. So if you're growing your own food, forging your own food, you're probably not on medication. Or if you're on medication, you want to get off of, um, or I know you eventually want to get off 30, 40 pills a day. But make sure you talk to your doctor because some of those pills, if you get off of them too soon, you could hurt yourself really bad. So, and the longer you're on medication, the more difficult it is. But, I mean, just think about it. If, you, if we ate what we grew only what we grew knowing what is in it that's not genetically modified to reduce the nutritional value of it but to actually give our bodies what it needs to have strong immune systems and to resolve issues that are occurring like more commonly now than they have ever been if we ate that way every day we would probably never have to go to the doctor unless it was for a broken bone or surgery so I mean, think about it. Anyway, this light doesn't really do this food justice. It doesn't look... Um, I mean, you could even do this with soy sauce. Just a little bit of soy sauce. And I, I know soy's got GMOs in it, too. That's why I don't really use too much of it. But check that out. Looks, Looks like, like asparagus, American. doesn't it? Yeah, it like a spinach bowl to it. Yeah, it tastes so good. You want to try one? Okay. Oh, that's my husband, guys. He, he promised me when we were, uh, first got together that he would always try foods, but it has been a rare thing. I'm like an ultra rare. Be careful about people who promise you things. <laughs> Be careful about people who promise you. But anyway, I'm going to cook some egg with this. I'll be right back. This is um, over easy egg over rice with now what is called poke salad as a dish. And I hope you guys enjoy it.